Hi, my name's Janelle, and in this series, I'm going to be showing you how to go from knowing absolutely zero about sewing to being able to make your own wardrobe. I don't use big words or overcomplicate things. I just plan on showing you what I've learned over a decade of making my own clothes and share all the tips and tricks I've learned along the way to make sewing a whole lot easier. If you've been watching all of the videos in this series so far, then you should now have a pretty good understanding of the basics of sewing and we can now start to delve into the more advanced aspects of sewing, starting with how to make and use bias binding. Bias binding, also known as bias tape, is a narrow folded strip of fabric that has been cut on the bias of the fabric. Cutting along the bias of the fabric means cutting at a diagonal angle against the weave or grain of the fabric, which gives anything cut along the bias a nice amount of natural stretch. This means that bias binding has a little bit of stretch to it, making it a bit more flexible and therefore able to conform to curves much better than fabric that's just cut on the grain normally. Because of this, bias binding is perfect for finishing off raw edges of garments such as at neck openings and armholes. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own bias binding and we'll also show you how to actually use bias binding when making clothes. So by far the easiest and most convenient way to make bias binding is to use these bias binding tools. They are very inexpensive and make making your own bias binding so, so easy. The different colors represent the different widths of bias binding you can make. For example, I'm going to be using one of the options that will make 25 millimeter wide bias binding. So as I mentioned, for bias binding, you're going to need to cut strips of fabric along the bias of the fabric. Your bias binding maker's instructions will tell you how wide your strips of fabric will need to be. And for 25 millimeter wide bias binding, I will need to start with 45 millimeter wide strips. A good tip is to write the recommended fabric width on some masking tape and then tape it onto your maker so you can easily know how wide to cut your strips next time you need to make some bias binding. To speed up the cutting process a little, it's a good idea to fold your fabric in half along the bias so that you can cut two strips out at once. Then use your water erasable pen or some tailor's chalk to mark out the strip width directly onto your fabric using the folded edge as a guide to ensure your strip is nice and straight along the bias. Then cut the strips out along the markings and then use the previously cut out strips as a template to cut out more strips if you need. As you can see here, because the strips of fabric have been cut along the bias, they have a slight stretch which will make the finished bias binding really good for sewing along curved edges. Depending on the amount of bias binding you will need for your project, you may need to stitch multiple strips together. To do this, place the two ends of the strips together with right sides together and place them in such a way so that the ends line up nicely and you've created a right angle with the strips. Then stitch the ends together like this, making sure the seam allowance is as small as possible. Once you unfold the strips, you should have a pretty seamless continuing strip of bias binding. Then repeat this process until you have the length of bias binding required for your project. Now it's time for the magic part. With the right sides of your strip facing down, place one end of the strip into the wider end of the bias binding maker. You may need to use a seam ripper to guide the fabric through the maker. The bias binding maker will begin to fold your fabric strip and as it does, use your iron to press the folds in place. and your strip of fabric should now be folded nicely into some bias binding. For my project, I need to fold my bias binding in half once more so that all of the raw edges are enclosed onto the inside. 
and my bias binding is now ready to use. Now let me show you how to actually sew with it. For this example, I'm going to be finishing off the neck edge of my pansy sewing pattern with the bias binding that I just made to take it from looking like this to this. This actually requires two different methods and so I will also use some contrasting bias binding I made earlier. For the first method, you will need some bias binding that has not been folded in half that extra time and you will instead need to unfold one of the edges of the binding. And then with the right sides of the fabric facing, place the edge of the bias binding along the edge of whatever it is you would like to bind with bias binding. Then pin the binding in place to your fabric. Next, stitch the bias binding to your fabric, making sure to stitch directly into the folded crease line like this. As you can see, the bias binding is able to curve easily around the curve of the keyhole detail of the pansy pattern without puckering or bunching up, and this is all because of the fabric being cut along the bias. Next, fold and press the bias binding towards the inside of the garment along the seam line, and then press it in place with your iron. Even though the bias binding is able to be eased nicely around the curve, it is still quite fiddly to do this part and may take a bit of practice to get it to look perfect. Then stitch this now folded bias binding in place. And once stitched it should look a little something like this. To show you the next method, I'm going to be binding the neck edge of my dress and making a tie up closure for the keyhole detail. For this method, you're going to have to use some bias binding that has been folded in half, like I showed earlier. Simply place the folded bias binding along the fabric edge of whatever it is you would like to bind and then pin the binding in place. To enclose the raw ends of the bias binding, unfold the binding fully and then fold the end of the binding in by about one centimeter or half an inch and then fold the binding back in place using the pressed crease lines as a guide. Once stitched, this will nicely enclose all of the raw edges onto the inside. Then stitch the binding in place, making sure to catch the folded bias binding on the other side. Again, this does take a little bit of practice to get right, so I recommend stitching nice and slowly and use as many pins as you can to make sure the bias binding stays in place as you sew. Then lastly, give your binding a good press with your iron. And you should now have a nicely finished neck edge like this. There are many other ways to work with bias binding, but these two methods that I've shown in this video are the two easiest and main ways I tend to use bias binding when making my own clothes. So I hope you found this video helpful and that you now have a much better understanding on what bias binding is and how to actually use it when garment making. In the next video of this series, I'm going to be showing you how to gather fabric, so definitely stay tuned for that. Also, if you have any requests for topics you'd like me to cover in this series, then please feel free to leave your suggestions below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more sewing type videos like this one and I'll see you in the next video.